Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, ships at sea. Press. I love using that intro. It really does something for me. Anyway, before we even get into it, this is uh, one more mentioning that we hope that everyone is safe, sound, staying secure. We're all in this together. I think we can win. My money's on us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome forward. Welcome left. Welcome right. That's how we do it around here. We just try to keep it moving. But ladies and gentlemen, this is Tracy Spivey, or as they say on IG, Spivey4994, with ACAD News, also with collaboration with Nerd Generation, and Mr. Pablo Solano. P, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Um, I just want to make a quick mention. Uh, I was watching uh, First Blood the other night, and when I saw the, the news that uh, Mr. Dennehy had passed away, I was like, damn, he was, he, he was always good. Yeah, he was always and, good. Uh, you could always count on him. He was always good to expound the role. Yes, he was always good to the art. He was one of those few NFL players that when he went into acting, he actually knew what he was doing. He was a linebacker, if you guys didn't know. If you guys just thought he was a big guy trying to act. No, he was a linebacker. Uh, I, had, I had respect for Mr. Denny. He was a very good actor. He went on Broadway for a while. Back in the uh, 90s, late 90s, he had a run. I'll get the name of the uh, show that he did. He was a quality actor. Um... Don't know him personally, but it seemed like he was a good guy, and uh, we're going to miss him. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to miss him, but we get to look at his film roles and appreciate the crap that he was able to do. Ladies and gentlemen, AK News and Nerd Generation is here to bring you, that's right, because of the success of the MCU Future Series. We have did it. We sat down. We got a couple of... uh, Jumping Jacks together, we decided to make the DCU Future Series. That's right, we did it. The DCU Future Series. And we did this, ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of things happen while we're all under quarantine, seemingly so. Uh, some news articles came out, some news information came out that we had decided. I called it, I called Pablo up and said, you know, we need to talk about this. Other than just one item. I thought it was just necessary to talk about the overall, because there's a lot of things that um, needs to be said about the DCU, which is obviously not the MCU. That's a whole nother beast. That's a whole nother universe compared to the DCU. And uh, let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the DCU is falling off of the DCEU, all the, all the acronyms that they used to throw out there. But basically, the DCU started... Back with Man of Steel. Man of Steel was launched. It was a new take on the Kryptonian. And if you didn't know, there was a premise out there that it's hard to make Superman, or or, or as they said, Mr. Perfect, for modern day audiences. I kind of disagree with that because there's so many Superman stories that haven't even been brought to bear and I, I just think that was uh, a lazy excuse. Oh, it's hard to make a mm-hmm. Superman movie. He's perfect. How do you do? What kind of villain can he fight? What kind of problems can he ever have because he's Superman? I mean, you can do that all day long. Yeah. And then you'll never make a movie. But Superman's a great character. <laughs> Superman's an American icon. And there, there are so many good stories to make of Superman. Hey, listen, they did it with DC Films. Mm-hmm. They did it with the animation show. Uh, 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 Bruce mm-hmm. Tim was able to do it. He made yeah. a good series. Guess what? Superman yeah. didn't overpower his enemy. But let's stick yeah. to the subject. We're talking about the DC, DCU and the DC films. We had Man of Steel, which was profitable. Wasn't what they thought it would be. But, P, I can tell you this right now. When Man of Steel came out, they weren't looking for the billion-dollar home run. They were just looking to get their foot in the door. Is that correct or not? Yeah. They decided to start something in order to compete, and let me expand on that a little bit. Uh, you mentioned, you know, we call it a DCU, and there's a reason for that. Many people out there will probably come to us or, or tell us in the comment section or give us a phone call or text us letting us know that it's the DCEU. No, it is not. It never was. It, it never was. It never was. It never was. And now we get a glimpse as to what the possibilities are could be with some of the news that has recently come out. Um, When you were talking about uh, 
Superman and how difficult it seems for them to make a Superman film um, for the modern day person, right? Yeah, modern cinema, oh, he's perfect. Nothing can really hurt him. You can't just keep yeah. running kryptonite. Yeah. That seems lazy. Uh, That's lazy writing yeah. to me. I understand when you, and I'm going to go back to it real quick. When you watch the first Superman with Christopher Reeve, it's like, how can you, you, there's no other film that's come close. Henry Cavill was the closest, but it was all about the look. I'm sorry, but Henry Cavill, this, this role is not for him. He's great as the Witcher. Obviously he's, so. He's, 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 he's check, great check at the ratings. roles. Check the ratings, yeah. <laughs> he was great at Mission Impossible. Because you got to remember, everybody loves Zack and what he did and want to see the release of the Snyder Cut and all that other stuff, right? Well, and don't say everybody. There's a fringe. Yeah, but it was Zack that did those films. He directed Superman. He gave you the Superman that he wanted. He didn't give you the Superman that we want. Correct. He gave you his interpretation. So, yes, Henry Cavill looks the part, but this is not... I don't believe this is the role for him. There is an inkling of the beginning of something possibly starting anew um because let's let's call it what it is executives may say that this is not uh, uh or other people may say well we're not competing with the mcu yes you are why because you are competing in the same space correct you're in competition friendly competition whatever competition is competition you want you're in the business of making movies to make money. Like you said, these are comic book movies, and it's the same space. You're in the same store. Yeah. Coke and Pepsi. It's like Coke and Pepsi. That's it. Exactly. Don't the difference here is that on one side, you got people that care about the property and looking twenty years into the future and how to develop them in a great way, right? And you got Warner Brothers, they do not want to put the effort necessary, the TLC that it requires to give us a universe to compete and out, and, and, and possibly outlast. Correct. They Ladies don't want to do that part. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's, listen, Man of Steel was followed by BVS. Batman yeah. versus Superman. That's when, that's when the bottom fell out, in my opinion. We got introduced to a Doomsday character, but it really wasn't Doomsday, but it was supposedly was. And we got introduced to Doomsday and Lex Luthor. Both failed. Miserably. Miserably. And I'm telling you, I have yet to find someone that will dispute in a sensible way as to how good this movie was. I think the majority do feel that Batman versus Superman was whack. Not even so much whack. The characters were misinterpreted. Yeah. This is not this. Is, ladies and gentlemen, we said it before on many other, many other avenues and uh, platforms. You can't take Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, mix it up with. I don't even know who step that Superman that Henry Cavill played in uh, BVS. I don't. That was no, from no storyline, and yeah. you just. Threw in this whole yeah. thing, and you introduced Wonder Woman. It was just, uh, I mean, but then once again, I understand now, once it came out, I understand why Zach did it. He only had a five-picture forecast. I'm going to do my five films, and I'm out. Yeah. Unfortunately for your audience, you're used to Marvel, and like you said, Pete, they're planning 20 movies down the line. They're not thinking of five films. Are you crazy? i got to be able yeah. to carry storylines. That wasn't Zach's problem. Oh, well, Warner Brothers, boys and girls, they give a lot of creative control to directors. Now, if you see what Marvel does, Marvel, Disney won't do that. Why? Because we can't have you come in, do whatever you want to do, and then now you left. Now i got a mess here yeah. with continuity yeah. And and, yeah. and and what's the worst thing that can happen? If the general audience doesn't like it. Holy cow, Batman. The general audience didn't <laughs> like it. You were pretty good before with just uh, Mr. Nolan's Batman uh, series. And then, uh, of course, um, the Dark Knight um, Batman. What was it? Batman Rises? What was the name of the third one? Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight mm -hmm. Rises. But there was what? A four-year gap? Five-year gap? 
So Christopher Nolan could just sit back, chill out, he'd do whatever he wants. You got a problem when the MCU started taking hold and they started cranking out movies, but they were all linear. You still have people operating on the premise, well, I can do whatever I want, continuity be damned. And that's basically what Fox did over there with the X-Men. And that's why once the MCU hit, the X-Men movies were going in the tank because you can't compete yeah. with what, what MCU is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not preaching Bible. It just ain't magic. This is business. BVS hit. The characters were misinterpreted. All right, so guess what? The general audience and even the fan base will give you a pass. We'll let this go, just like we gave a lot of passes to a lot of early MCU movies, a la Iron Man 2 and, of course, Iron Man 3. We gave passes. Um, Justice League came out. And I remember sitting, this is a New York thing, at Lincoln Center. And I didn't know what to expect, which was a great thing. I, I, didn't, I stayed away from the spoilers and the blogs and, the, you know, because once, you know, the movies open overseas, people start trafficking and in information and it goes back and forth and you got to do a, like a little media blackout. Um, when it opened up with uh, Wonder Woman, okay. When it, then it went to Batman on the roof scene with the criminal, okay. Then the parademon, okay, still okay. Still okay. It's still carrying over. The, the luggage from uh, BVS. <laughs> and then it went to, I was seeing a lot of the stuff that I saw in the trailers as far as Bruce mm -hmm. Wayne and Aquaman or Jason Momoa for the ladies, you know, for the ladies. And um, mm -hmm. that was pretty much it. Flash was introduced. Basically, I saw all of Flash's introduction, just like you and everybody else. We saw it on the TV commercials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say, what you said, Trey? We saw it on the TV commercials. You know that. We know that. But that's okay. Yeah. It's the little bit, the in-between bit, the, the stuff in between. What happened at uh, Demascara when um, Steppenwolf came and he got the um, he got the mother box. I didn't yeah. expect that character design for Steppenwolf. Then we got a little uh, DC uh, mythology. They went back to the past. That was okay. You actually saw that there was a Green so Lantern. They gave, they gave us a lot of stuff that we didn't care about. They didn't build nothing, and it was they were trying. I, I think they were just trying too hard and, and going too fast. Now, remember, we're talking about DC films, ladies and gentlemen. We have to skip to a couple of months later. We were introduced, that's right, to Suicide Squad, which was, for all accounts, a mixed bag of criticism. But guess what? It was actually profitable. You can try to get the, the crystal ball, tea leaves, carrot cards. I can't even explain why it got raked over the coals <laughs> critically, but it still made money. Maybe it's the whole, I mean, I don't, I don't, you know what, now when you think about the movie, I don't know what it was. Um, Garrett Leto's, Garrett Leto's Joker was the ultimate letdown, I guess. Maybe that's what it was. I think maybe everybody wanted to see Jared Leto's Joker. They wanted to see mm -hmm. Robbie's Harley Quinn. But the rest of that story and, and some of the side yeah. characters, I mean, Will Smith was great. I, listen, Will Smith was great. Yeah. He's a great dead yeah, shot. He, he, he was good. Killer Croc was, was garbage. Good. Everything else was yeah. oh basically was, was cosplay. Any, and I'm yeah, not taking shots. I, sometimes I hate to look at a character... And be like, oh, he, a black guy is playing him. Like, oh, because they had to. Well, they had to. They were, you know, listen, you know, still we got unions running this thing. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a black character. Killer Croc was it? You know what? You know what? You he can do that. Horrible. Why? He was because, horrible. Because 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 Killer Croc is not even whatever. Well, listen, what's the difference between Killer Croc and Curse and Thor: The Dark World? Um, they had different lunch breaks. It's the same thing. <laughs> It's the same thing, and I'm not taking a shot at him because I, lo I loved him on Lost. I loved him on Lost. But it was the same, he was, he was the same guy. I mean, yeah. it, it was what it was. And then, then the Justice League, let's, let's talk the tropes. What were we looking for in Justice League? We were looking for the return of Superman in some big, bombastic, heroic way. And somehow, some way. It was lackluster. But then people are saying, well, Zach had to leave because of what happened. God, God, 
God bless him. What happened with his family? I understand that. Yeah. But obviously, DC delayed the Wonder Woman movie for a year. You could have waited for Zach to get through it or go through it or whatever for him yeah. to come back. I don't know what they the rush was. Out. They wanted him out, and this was the perfect opportunity. But So we're saying they wanted him out because Man of Steel and BBS, they ultimately wanted him out from Justice League. Because people and all the people on the block that say, oh, oh, uh, uh, Man of Steel and BBS, they lost money, boys and girls. Look at yeah. the numbers. You can say you love Zach, whatever. Yeah. They lost money on v BBS. That yeah. was supposed to be a billion-dollar movie. What? At least 1.5 won't it wouldn't be surprised if it hit two. Batman and Superman in the same film. And what was Justice League supposed to be, boys and girls? That was supposed to be two billion dollars. Two billion. Easy. If, if done right. If done correctly. Easy. Easy. We were supposed to have lunch boxes, tattoos. What? Go karts. What? Food platters for McDonald's. The whole smorgasbord, you know how we do it in America. We 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 we, we pump it up. But guess what? Yeah. Uh uh. As a matter of fact, when, when before Justice League even came out, they were already in and this is a word that everybody in any media business hates to say, we were already in damage control. Because we already knew this ain't gonna make it. Nope. That and I'm not sounding like day. this to sound like the I Grim Reaper, the but we were already in damage control, boys and girls. You know it, I know it, I was we like, know it, even Stan Lee knew it. As I watched it, ju this is Justice League, my mind drifted in what could have been if done right. This was the, this was the biggest opportunity they had. To compete with Marvel, and, yes. And, they, yeah, and, and they're in competition regardless. They're competing with them, and they're losing very, very badly. Ladies and gentlemen, I could watch Age of Ultron 15 times before I could watch Justice League. <laughs> and you guys hated Age of Ultron because, and listen, let me tell you something, and I'm, I'm not going to drift. No drifting. See the alert? Beep, beep. No, no drifting. I want to make one mention. Go ahead. I want to make one mention. Not Go drifting. Ahead. Yeah, and I think I know what the mention is going to be because I, I saw the articles today, too, and it kind of scared me a little bit. Um, Josh Whedon's Age of Ultron, the problem was, and th there was a disappointment to Disney. Disney thought they had their first $2 billion movie. But what was wrong with um, Age of Ultron? Age of Ultron had a little bit too much of Josh Whedon's aesthetic. One yes. thing that turned people off from uh, Age of Ultron, that... Romance between the Hulk and Black Widow dropped out the sky. It came out of nowhere. No one wanted it. Nobody appreciated it. Nobody wanted Hawkeye to have a family. It's almost like Jock Wheeling was making a TV movie just like with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, what is this? Can we stay on course? I mean, he caught it. I mean, Josh Whedon caught it after that. I went, I went to the bathroom when Captain America tried to choke out a, um, Ultron. Yeah, I just it, got it, up and left. It wow. The reason why I, I you can watch Age of Ultron, I was watching it the other day, and I was watching it like I was watching it for the first time. Why? Because there's so many things that ha we've seen in the future. But see, that's we're because at the mobile Easter eggs. that's because mobile studio is able to build stuff out. DC yeah, films when exactly. you let the when you let the creator dictate what's going on, you can't do that. You can't go back in the future and fix it. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. So this thing is, oh, this is Tom. He's a great director. Let me let him do the project. Yeah, but is Tom going to work in coordination to the future? Tom goes, I don't know anything about the future. I'm just doing my thing. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> exactly, yo. You can't go back MC and fix that. MC got a team, yo. It's not a, yeah, it's not a team. This is not a team. DC got a, a, a squad full of Michael Jordans. And that's Everybody the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody's doing their own thing. And whether it whether it connects or whether it's, there's continuity, that's up to the audience. You guys don't like it, don't watch it. The director, I took my cash, I cashed my check, and I'm gone. Yeah. But those people that were at Warner Brothers during this time, ladies and gentlemen, of Man of Steel, BVS, Justice League, Suicide Squad, ladies and gentlemen, those people are gone. The yeah. president is gone. It yeah. was a take the money and run. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. Now, okay, let's talk about what happened after that. We were now looking for 
Oh my goodness. Wonder Woman. Aquaman. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. we got life. There was light at the <laughs> end of the tunnel. Unimagined light with Aquaman. Nobody saw that coming. And if you say you did, nope. you're a liar. Yep. You're a liar. Oh, no. I You knew what? All you knew was James yeah. Wan makes horror movies. Stop. Don't do, eh, don't do that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I never doubted Patty Jenkins. Never. Because Patty was being courted by Marvel. So that tells you something. Mm -hmm. I never doubted yeah. Patty Jenkins. James Wan. James Wan is horror. I didn't know if he can transition. But let me tell you something, sir. And you, I sent you an article back in the day when this uh, Aquaman first hit. James Wan said he said the magic word, just like Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins said the magic word, too. When they were making their films, obviously, Wonder Woman and Aquaman, you know what they looked at? Ladies and gentlemen, get your notes out, boys and girls, pen and paper. They looked at Captain America, First Avenger, and they were successful. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. They looked at Captain America, the First Avenger, and they built their Matrix. Yeah. And guess what? Not only was it critically acclaimed, Ladies and gentlemen, turn off the TV Saturday morning cereal. Aquaman made a billion damn dollars. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't. I, you can't I, I, still explain that. Nah, nah, nah. The only explanation that I have for that billion dollars is females wanted to go see him. And because Jason Momoa is a likable guy, you didn't think that movie, because that movie the fabulous special effects. The photography is excellent. Oh, my God. That is one of the most prettiest, beautiful films beautiful you've ever film. seen in your life. Beautiful. Little pieces of it, little pieces of it were corny, but... But it's good to look it at. Was, it, yeah, but it wasn't because it was a great film. The story... No. How do you reveal the classic costume in commercials... You reveal the classic costume is because Warner Brother was desperate. I just came off of failures. Man of Steel, BBS, Justice League. Let me tell you this. That's why. I, I got to draw you back in. I got to draw you back in. You might still be mad. When I was watching the film, the crowd, there was no reaction to when he came out with that classic suit. There was no reaction. There was no reaction. That should have been huge. And it wasn't. There was nothing to undercut or depreciate the fact that, listen, it was a cleaner Mortal Kombat. It looked like uh, Clash of the Titans, but it was it was just had a little bit more money and it was brighter. Yeah. You had prettier people in it, I guess. Uh, uh, you had William Dafoe. You can't lose with William Dafoe. Ask John Wick. That's Keanu Reeves. You can't lose with Willem, with, with Willem Dafoe, please. That's a home run right there. Always and now he'll play, he'll play a mentor role. There it is. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. After the success of uh, Suicide Squad, Margot Robbie went in her bank, got a couple of pennies. They put together the Birds of Prey. Yeah. Warner Brothers took a bath, ladies and gentlemen. So now we got a setback. What? Harley Quinn and the emancipation, the the, the <laughs> emancipation of Mimi. Uh, uh, this is Mariah Carey's album. I, I mean, I, I'm lost. <laughs> but Harley Quinn and the yeah, well yeah. Um, you let the uh, director Kathy come in. Kathy Yang comes in, and mm -hmm. here's the thing. Once again, Warner Brothers' little curse that always bites them in the neck. You have creative control. Guess what Kathy Yang does. Yeah. She introduces mm -hmm. a black mask that's never been on film before, ladies and gentlemen. So you get yeah. the you get the right to unveil it. And what do we get? First of all, I didn't know whether or not Ewan McGregor should have been cast. And and full discrepancy, I didn't even see this movie. To this point, I've not seen that movie. Apparently, he's great. I would have never casted him of being a gangster. Because, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I get my black mass interpretation. You ever watch the cartoons? Black mass and cartoons is great. <laughs> the DC animation films, black mass is the joint. Yeah, he's you crazy. love that guy. He's crazy. 
He's crazy, yeah. but he's not Joker crazy, and he's not, not Two-Face yeah. crazy. He's business crazy. I'm just in it yeah. for me. I got to do my thing. These guys are crazy. I'm just trying yeah. to run this town. Joker's crazy. Two-Face is crazy. And Penguin is just angry and mean. But they're all yeah. gangsters. But, but yeah. Joker's more than... Again, Joker's crazy. Anyway, uh, we can talk yeah. Joker for the next 20 years. But anyway. Mm-hmm. He introduced Black Mass. He introduced... He got to introduce Black Canary... And apparently, she can only use her power once. I mean, I used to hate growing up, and, and I'm sure, I used to hate when we finally saw one of our superheroes on the screen, they had to do something to cripple him. Yeah. If he was too fast, yeah, but he can't be fast until nighttime. If he was too strong, yeah, but he can't be too strong around the color blue. It was always yeah. something... That the three networks, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you how far back we go. We're talking about $6 million, man. We're talking about the three networks. The three oh, networks, God. we had to do something that crippled the hero. I, I don't know what that was. Was that? I don't know what that was all about. But they always had to do something. Now, here we are with Birds of Prey. You cripple Black Canary. I don't even care about the race change. Race change, unless it's something outrageous like making Robin black. No, I'll never go for that. <laughs> Dick, Dick Race is Dick Race. That's my boy. Yeah, but yeah. you want to make Black Canary black? Okay, because I was always looking at Green Arrow and Canary. They were always, and I have no problem with that, but I'm not, who, mm. no, who's racist with their superheroes? Are you crazy? But <laughs> you did that? Okay. The Huntress was a letdown. You took that, you took Elizabeth because she's a name for acting. Yeah. She wasn't the Huntress. Rosie Perez was great. For the role that she had, she was a detective. So that little girl mm-hmm. is supposed to be grow up to be back. It's supposed to be back girl, uh, Kane. That little girl, it, she's got a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe you thought you would get a franchise out of this. I doubt very much. Um, Margot Robbie's gonna come back and put more money into that franchise that didn't make money. And I don't even know how that good that animation. I don't know how good that that cartoon series you is know, doing I, either I, I on DC Universe. I don't get it. I, I get, get it. it. I think you do get it. They're coming off. No, what was the most successful thing coming out of Suicide Squad? Harley Quinn. Oh, the Harley Quinn. Because the show yeah, wasn't no, Gary Leto. People's opinions are everywhere now, right? You can read them. Everybody's posting about what they feel uh, um, towards a particular content, right? So I read these things, and there seems to be people that do enjoy the, the show, the, the animation I'm speaking of, but I don't hear, like... You don't hear people recommending it to other people, bottom line. Yeah. Hey, did yeah. you see? Hey, did you see? No, you don't hear that. Yeah, you, don't, when you don't hear dope, that. Because when something's dope, ladies and gentlemen, when something's dope, we, we, everybody's all over the platforms yeah, texting it to their that. friends. Go see it. Go see go it. Go watch see that. It. Go see it. Nope, I didn't hear that. I, they were trying. I think people, I think the media, my, in my opinion, I don't want to get too crazy, but in my opinion, there's, there was an agenda being pushed. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? I understand what you're saying. Back when, back in the world before COVID, you're right. There probably was an agenda being pushed because that agenda was pushed on some other Netflix programs. There was an agenda being pushed. Here's the thing that happened, boys and girls. Agenda was being pushed, and then there was a pushback. We don't like it. <laughs> yeah. But that's business. Yeah. You throw stuff. Yeah. But like you said, like we said on the show, you just can't throw stuff on the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. And I would I would tell one about you can't do this because what's gonna happen? I mean, the yeah. fan base is loyal, but after a while, can't do it, man. But you just gotta this stuff imagine. is garbage. You gotta imagine for, to yourself, Trey. Millions of dollars are being poured into these films. Oh, I look at the you budget. Gotta I think, think, you give, gotta, me, give me you that gotta money. You gotta think to yourself. Yeah, you gotta think to yourself. These dudes got money to be taking huge ass risks on this. They have to have money. You gotta have money to pour down and see what sticks and see what you can make money off of, right? You Listen, gotta have a lot of money for that. We 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 have a, I guess I always said that I said that in the first podcast we did. We're kind of kind of maybe it's a maybe it's an ugly word, but we're kind of insiders. There is a lot of money, and some of these things are being directed by the studio. I guess that's the cleanest way to say it. There's some of these things that if you and I and a couple of heads sat down, we wouldn't go in that direction. But guess what? We're not financing these things, and maybe the people who are financing these things, maybe they should really take a look and talk to. 
people who know this genre. Not mm. that guy who just wants to direct his vision. I, I respect that. But he don't know the genre. He's going to tell you what he wants, and we're going to tell you how it is, and you got to mm -hmm. be the one in the middle. The great thing about the MCU is Kevin Feige is that guy that knows the genre and knows what to do with a vision. That's the one yeah. main difference. That's why everybody says you have to have a showrunner, you have to have a spotter. Warner Brothers doesn't want, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Warner Brothers DC Films, DCU, they do not want a franchise runner. That's why they're going to always fall into these problems. If it was up to me, I would make Patty Jenkins, but you know what? And one thing that broke my heart, Patty's going to take a break. Yeah. Patty's taking a break. She's got some other things she wants to do. But I think she's going to yeah. stay in the DC realm. I think she wants to make that movie about the Amazon. And if Patty Jenkins makes a movie about the mascara, I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm going. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going. Yeah. I don't think nobody will say no. We just got to give Patty some money because that third scene in the first one of them was garbage. <laughs> third act. Wow. I would have collected bottles for you, Patty. You know, you know I love you, babe. <laughs> I'd have been there for you, babe, because they didn't give you no dough. <laughs> they didn't give you no dough, man. That was crazy. Nah. But anyway, nah. let's stick to subject. So now the DC, DCU is in a flux. We failed in the beginning with Zach. We replaced Zach with the Josh. Josh was coming in there to do cleanup. That was a complete mess. You missed the whole opportunity of Justice League. Okay, here we are. Wonder Woman's a hit. Aquaman made a bill, which still shakes the stock market today. Let's start announcing some projects. Here we go. The DC Future Films. Stay tuned next week for the continuation of the DCU Future Series Part 2. Please leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. And also, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to be notified of all future episodes, please hit the notification bell. The Nerd Gen and Egghead News Podcast 